Hi everyone, welcome to Access Prescriptor in our muscle knowledge series. Today we are going to talk about hamstring muscle group. This is a group of three muscles, semi-tendinosus, semi-membranosus and biceps femoris. Adductor magnus also considered as a fourth hamstring because this muscle also attaching in the ischial tuberosity. But today we are not going to talk about adductor magnus muscle. We will talk about these three muscles in the hamstring group. As usual, we will start with naming why is muscle called biceps femoris because it has two head, long head and short head. So two head means biceps, it's situated in the femoral region. So this muscle called biceps femoris, similarly like our biceps brachialis. Biceps brachialis also have two head and it's situated over the brachial region. So it called biceps brachialis, this muscle called biceps femoris and semi-tendinosis. Semi-tendinosis means it has distally longer tendon, longer tendon portion distally. So this muscle called semi-tendinosis. Semi-membranosis proximally attached flattened and larger membranous like flattened tendon attaching proximally. So it attaching like membranous flattened manner. So this muscle called semi-membranosis. Semi-membranosis short head of biceps femoris situated deeper to the long head of biceps femoris and semi-tendinosis. Next we look at the attachment of hamstring muscle. All three muscles proximally attaching over the ischial tuberosity. Especially the long head of biceps femoris attaching also to the sacrotuberous ligament and forming the posterior superficial line. Short head of biceps femoris proximally attaching over the linea aspera and lateral supracondylar line. Distal attachment of the hamstring muscles. Each muscle is very. First, I will explain the biceps femoris. Biceps femoris, short head and long head, attaching over the fibular head and lateral condyle of the tibia. Semi tendinosis, long tendon, passing the knee anteriorly and attaching over the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. Another two muscles get attached over the same place that is called gracilis and sartoris. All three muscles attaching on the same place anteromedial aspect of the tibia passing the knee laterally. Passing the knee laterally and attaching over the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. This portion called pus ansernus. Semi membranosis it tendon distal tendon is not attached crossing the knee anteriorly it's directly coming and attaching medial aspect of the tibial condyle now we'll understand the functions of hamstring muscle functions i always categorize standard mover action and reverse mover action standard mover action is if insertion move towards origin that is called standard mover action if origin move towards insertion that is called reverse mover action now we'll understand the standard mover action first uh, in hamstring, this uh, distal attachment is insertion, proximal attachment is origin. Consider the origin, proximal attachment is fixed, distal attachment moving towards the origin, uh, proximal attachment. Uh, all the hamstring muscles, fibers are running vertically and crossing the knee joint, attaching tibia and fibula. If the muscle pull happen in this way, it creates the knee flexion and also the proximal muscle fibers, if it is pulled in this way, again, it creates the hip extension also. So hamstring muscle helps to produce the hip extension and knee flexion but this muscle is stronger in knee flexion compared to the hip extension. It is called accessory or secondary hip extensor. Now I will explain an interesting function of the hamstring muscle. It also helps in medial and lateral rotation of the tibia at the knee joint. I will explain how the semi tendinosus and membranosus is attaching medial aspect of the tibia. Mem tendinosis is passing anteriorly and attaching anterior aspect of the tibia and the membranes are attaching posterior aspect of the condyles of tibia. So if this muscle contract in this way, it creates the medial rotation of the tibia. This pulls in this way, it creates the medial rotation of the tibia at the knee joint. And the biceps femoris muscle attaching the lateral aspect of the lateral condyle of the tibia and head of the fibula. If this muscle pulls or contract in this way, it creates the lateral rotation of the lateral rotation of the tibia at the knee joint lateral rotation of the tibia at the knee joint but this function only can occur if the knee is flexed reverse mover action of the hamstring now consider the organ is moving towards the insertion insertion is fixed 
all three muscle attaching over the ischial tuberosity and fibers are running vertically as i said before if this pulls in this way it contracts it create the posterior pelvic tilt pulls the ischial tuberosity downward to create the posterior pelvic tilt except the short set of biceps femoris because this muscle is not crossing the hip joint and attaching over the ischial tuberosity so all three muscles helps in posterior pelvic tilt this is called reverse mover action of the hamstring isometric stabilization function of the hamstring it helps to stabilize the pelvis at the hip joint and also knee joint most importantly semi tendinosus muscle as i said before it attaching anterior medial aspect of the knee joint along with sartorius and gracilis these three muscle passing the knee joint medially and stabilize the medial knee joint against valgus stress key features of hamstring the proximal attachment of the long head of biceps femoris it's connected and blended with the semi tendinosus muscle and proximal attachment of short head of biceps femoris is connected and blended with the distal attachment of the gluteus maximus sometimes the short head of biceps femoris is not called as a true hamstring muscle because this muscle is not attaching over the ischial tuberosity and not crossing the hip joint and most importantly it is not innervated by tibial nerve which is a branch of sciatic nerve the short head of biceps femoris is innervated by common fibular nerve semi membranosus also attached with the medial meniscus semi membranosus facilitate the posterior movement of the medial meniscus during knee flexion it helps to reduce or prevent the excessive compression of medial meniscus between the femur and tibia during knee flexion clinical important point of the hamstring muscle is hamstring strain it will happen frequently in sprinting high velocity sprinting activity during football or uh, especially in sprint event under meter or 200 meter sprinting event when uh, in a drive position our hip is completely in a flexion when we try to extend the knee to place the feet on the floor during that position it is a complete opposite movement of the hamstring muscle you have hip flexion and knee extension in a high velocity phase it it will tear or strain the hamstring muscle so strengthening the hamstring muscle in an eccentric way it the best way to prevent the hamstring strain injury most commonly injured muscle in uh, hamstring strain is a biceps femoris uh, compared to the semi tendinosus and membranosus i feel the reason is semi tendinosus and membranosus originating medially and inserting also medially so fibers are running pure vertical manner but the biceps femoris originating medially and inserting laterally the fibers is not pure vertical it's slightly oblique that is the reason what i feel there are more common hamstring in strain injuries happening to the biceps femoris long head hope you learned something new don't forget to share and like this video happy learning see you in the next video bye